Trump versus Elijah Cummings. Trump makes some comments about who is wait. Is that the person from Baltimore? Baltimore? Yeah, yeah I, I remember that. Trump made some comments about Elijah Cummings and saying how he had failed the people of Baltimore and also made some comments about Al Sharpton. And I'm sorry to tell y'all this, but even though a person could be a horrible human being and a racist, Everything that they say is not false. It's not false. Um, what he said was incomplete about Elijah Mc Elijah Cummings. But the black politicians of the United States of America have failed the black community. Let's just be honest about that. They I have. only know about Baltimore from the TV show The Wire. I mean, yeah. If that's what goes on yeah. in Baltimore, then... But yeah. you just watch. Like I said before, I, we just covered not too long ago where they mayor had to resign. Yeah, I do remember that. Had to resign. And you see this type of stuff in Baltimore all the time. That same mayor last year had a bill that come to her de to desk that raised the minimum wage to fifteen dollars an hour, which still is not enough, but she shot that bill down. They have heard it, Baltimore, Baltimore, and not just Baltimore, but all around the United States of America. You have African American women without single black mothers is worth five dollars. Um, the black middle class. Is on schedule to have 0% of the wealth and 0% of the land by 2053. No, the black politician does not represent the African-American community. They just don't. And people are trying to make this about, man, Trump is attacking black people. No, he's attacking Elijah, Elijah Cummings. That's who he's attacking. He's saying that, hey, these black politicians haven't done the job for their communities. They haven't. Donald Trump is not the only one who's saying this. There's many African Americans who, who didn't walk up to this too. They say, no, these people are not doing the job for our community. And they're not. You'll hear uh, these folks out here talking about immigration way more than you would hear them talk about anything pertaining to the African American community. The only time they talk about the African American community is when they point Somebody get shot. No, not even that. It's all about using African Americans to come out and vote. They don't ever talk about African American issues. They only talk about racism pertaining to the Republican Party. And when you talk about getting shot, black people getting shot, where was the policies? Where was the policies that they was trying no, to usher in? You I mean that. Um, I don't know if I told you about the WikiLeaks things in 2016 where John Podesta and the other Democrats and WikiLeaks were telling the Democratic candidates, Hillary Clinton, to not talk about uh, policies for Black Lives Matter. Maybe. This is what they was telling them. They telling them, don't talk about issues pertaining to black people. But they wanted to the media to hype up all of these shootings in the country so they can get us to come to the polls. That's why they start putting all of these signs up talking about Trayvon Martin can't vote, but you can Tamir Rice can't vote, but you can. Since Trump got elected, you ain't seen none of these rallies like this going on. You ain't seen none of the media attention going on. But what you have had in the last three years is 356 black men get shot by police on average. The last three years. You ain't seen none of these rallies. Because the reason why they did it was to hurt us to the Democratic Party so we can vote. And when we didn't do that, they said, let's go on to something else. So now Trump comes out and he makes these statements and everybody wants to say, oh, he's attacking black people. No, oh, it's Elijah Cummings. He's saying Baltimore uh, have it problems there and it need help. And it does need help. And the people in Baltimore have been saying this forever, that it needs help there. 
And they just haven't gotten it from the Democratic Party. They just haven't. And um, and people are trying to get away from that to just make this about race, that he's attacking a black man. But the stuff that he's saying about that black man, it happens to be true. Like when you talk about right now up in New York, right? It's a young Latino chick up there running for office. And she far left. And on election night, they announced and said she won the race. But then they come in and they throw the New York machine up there, throw out some ballots. So this other woman, they were trying to get her to be the winner. Now you had Gregory Meeks going up there the other day, crowning her the victor. When all of the stuff that supposed to happen, the process haven't been completed, but he announced them. What you see constantly from the Congressional Black Caucus in this country is they always protect the establishment. When you watch Joe Biden and all the problems that Joe Biden have had with African Americans, with uh, talking about working with the segregationists and all of this stuff, you see who come out and protect him. John Lewis. You see the Congressional Black Caucus sitting up there talking about we could envision a ticket with Joe Biden as the head and Kamala Harris as the VP. With this young lady that I just mentioned. They always is out there protecting the establishment. And anytime black politicians are working with the establishment, bro, they are screwing over the African-American community. And I'm going to talk about that a little bit later with another topic. But he wasn't lying. And when he said Al Sharpton is a con man, he was right. Let's talk about Al Sharpton a little bit, shall we? In the 1970s, Old Cricket J. Edgar Hoover got caught by the Italian Mafia. See, the Italian Mafia would wiretap bathrooms and booths in their clubs. So they would get celebrities and other people saying incriminating stuff about themselves. There. Yeah. Go ahead. But get them to say incriminating stuff about themselves, and then they would use it to extort them. So J. Edgar Hoover was up there at a club with his bar friend. People didn't know he was gay, but they caught him having sex with his bar friend in one of the bathrooms. Now, at the time, the media in this country was talking about the Italian mafia. The Italian mafia wanted the heat off of them. So they extorted J. Edgar Hoover to get him to start talking about the Black Panthers and making Black Panthers out to be a terrorist group. If you go back and look at any of this stuff with J. Edgar Hoover, he never would ever say that it really was an Italian mafia. And the reason why is because he was being distorted. Now, ladies and gentlemen, Al Sharpton was working for that same Italian mafia. And in the 1970s, Al Sharpton because, was running around the country with James Brown. So he had access to all of these other black celebrities, and he would shift those people over to the mafia to the, so they could go to these clubs and they can extort them. Then Al Sharpton started selling drugs for the Italian mafia, and he got caught. And once he got caught, they asked him to put on a wire to go undercover and snitch on the Italian mafia. And he was an informant for the mafia. Now, you can go watch videos and look Look this up. You will see videos of Al Sharpton is a snitch and just read about it. He is a snitch. That's what he is. But he also is a con man too. Now, as you guys know, we just got through talking about in this country, the Central Park Five. I think the Central Park Five happened in 88, 89. Al Sharpton used to go to all the fights, like Trump said, with him and... Uh, Don King. If you know anything about Don King, Don King has been a hard down Republican his whole life. You, if you want to know how dirty he is, ask Mike Tyson because he can tell you. He can tell you. Now, he used to hang out with him all through the eights. Now, you guys all know that Donald Trump put out that big page in the uh, newspaper being hella racist towards the Central Park Five. Guess what? Al Sharpton was still hanging with him in the 90s. You can go back to to 2004. You can see Al Sharpton still hanging out with him. 
And like Trump said, he used to ask me for a whole lot of favors. Yeah, because he was a con man. And see, when he did the thing in this uh, with the Italian mafia, he tried to say, well, man, I was doing what I was doing to protect my community because the, the Italian mafia were flooding drugs into the black community. Yeah, but you was working with them until you got caught. You was there right there with them flooding drugs into the black community until you got caught. That's what you was doing. Let's be honest about this. And you were flooding those black celebrities to they club so the Italian mafia couldn't extort those people. Now let's talk about the other con with Al Sharpton. See, what you do in America when you're trying to get yourself closer to white capital is you get a group of people and you exploit those people's pains and they struggle. You make those people believe that you're fighting for them. But who you're really fighting for is yourself. So Al Sharpton went around the country pretending like he was fighting for African American. But what he was doing is making the news media and the Democratic Party see him as someone who had clout with the African American community. So they could put Al Sharpton in places. That's why you always seen him back in 1992 walking around with Bill Clinton and all of this type of stuff. He was their guy to hurdle us to the Democratic Party and vote. And they rewarded him heavily for that. He got the National Action Network, where he write himself a check for $632,000 every year. He got a show on NSNBC, where he gets paid heavily over there. Go and see how he screwed black people over with the Comcast deal. The cable company? Yeah, the, com yeah, the cable company. Go and watch if you guys... Get a chance. If I know some of you guys who, who listen to the show, you guys watch Tone Talks. If you haven't seen the interview, go watch the interview with Tone Talks and Byron Allen and just look up the Comcast deal and see what Al Sharpton did there. Just go and read. No, he screwed black people over heavily there. That's why he got that job at NSNBC. Because NSNBC is now owned by Comcast. He was helping them merge those deals. Didn't know that. Yeah, and so they helped Byron Allen out, a billionaire, and because By Byron Allen was trying to buy channels, and in the Byron Allen had inf information of these white folks were saying we ain't finna let another um, but the dude who owned BET, which y'all know who I'm talking about, Johnson. They were like, we ain't finna let another one of these dudes happen. This is the type of bad stuff that they was doing. And Al Sharpton was right there with them to be able to cut that deal. So, no, Al Sharpton is a con man. Al Sharpton is the only reverend I know that never had a church. Never thought about that either. Now, you never heard him in no pews, no church, or nothing. See, when we talk about black people, we got to understand. When you talk about civil rights leaders, when the standard of civil rights leaders is MLK. Well, you seen MLK out there fighting for black people. You seen what MLK, the pressure that he applied to the Democratic Party and Republican Party that delivered African Americans and damn near all the minorities in this country, they civil rights. You seen him fight for the Affordable Housing Act that was done in 1965. Then he did the immigration, fought for the Immigration Act, and that need to be revised. But he did fight for that. But... So you've seen things that we as African American got from his leadership of him being a civil rights leader. You can't tell us nothing that Al Sharpton didn't deliver. Why? Because that's not why he was doing it. This is the same thing with Elisa Garza, D. Ray McKesson, and the people of Black Lives Matter. Those people were doing the stuff that they was doing to get themselves closer to white capital. The same way that Al Sharpton was. George Soros poured in over a hundred million dollars to the Black Lives Matter people to try to rally us to the polls in 2016. And since that happened, we didn't go out and vote like that. You ain't seen none of these Black Lives Matter rally. You have now Alicia Garza out there attacking black men, the same men who she was telling you she was fighting for in 2016. She's out there now saying that black men are the reason why Donald Trump won the election. To these crazy people, somehow 13% is more than 87. 
Because 87% of African-American men voted for Hillary Clinton and only 13% voted for Donald Trump. While you have 54% of white women voted for Donald Trump and you ain't hear none of these feminist broads talk about white women voting for Trump, but they blaming black men for it. The same black men who they was telling you that they were fighting for with Trayvon Martin and Tamir Rice and Eric Gardner, they wasn't fighting for those people. What they was doing is getting themselves closer to white capital. Exploiting black people's pain and black people's struggle for their own financial own, own they own financial gain. All for self advancement. That's what they was doing. And now Sharpton done that whole thing. And he been playing black people like a fiddle for over thirty years doing this. But no push on the Republican Party. The Republican Party or the Democratic Party. And like I told you guys before, Al Sharpton weeks ago told, Oh, you know what? We can, the politician can go a long way by coming and talking to guys like us. See, he knows why he has the position that he has. He knows that he is a dude who played crown maker with the black community. That if those politicians see themselves with me, then we will give black people the okay that it's okay for them to vote for them. That's what Al Sharpton's job is. That's why he gets paid. That's why the Democratic Party had him around, and that's why NSNBC has him around. And like Trump said, he's a comment. Yeah, he is a comment. And with these congressional black caucus and all of these people, bro, in the country, they haven't been representing African American. They never have. They never have. And people just need to be honest about that, bro. All right, people, hit that like button, subscribe.